This video is a review of the chapter on liquid-liquid solutions in chemical thermodynamics. So we start with partial molar quantities, which are the important quantities of interest for solutions. And that's indicated by having the property with a bar over it for the molar part and a subscript I for the partial part. And these are functions of temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of all the given substances in the solution. And a partial molar quantity is equal to the partial derivative of that quantity divided by the change in, what, sorry, partial derivative of that quantity with respect to the number of moles of substance I in the solution, evaluated at constant temperature, pressure, and constant number of moles of all the other components. So quant quantities include partial molar volume, partial molar entropy, uh, partial molar Gibbs energy, etc. So the Gibbs-Duham equation comes from the chemical potential, which is a partial molar quantity. It's the partial molar Gibbs energy. And that is that the sum over all the components in the solution of their mole fraction times their change in their chemical potential is equal to zero. So the Gibbs-Duham equation relates the chemical potential of one substance in a solution to all of the others. And the change in chemical potential for a substance is equal to its negative partial molar entropy times change in temperature plus its partial molar volume times change in pressure. And mole fraction is just a metric for concentration, which is the number of moles of substance I divided by a sum over all of the moles, number of moles in all substances in the solution. So to get the chemical potential, of a substance in solution, you just take the chemical potential of that substance as a pure liquid plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of its vapor pressure divided by the vapor pressure of that substance as a pure liquid. This star superscript here indicates um, a pure component or as a, as a pure liquid for the given substance A. Raoul's law tells us what this vapor pressure is for a given component in the solution for if it is behaving ideally. Raoul's law says that the vapor, the partial vapor pressure of a component in a solution is equal to its mole fraction times the vapor pressure of that substance as a pure liquid. So if <clears throat> a liquid is behaving, if a solution is behaving ideally, then for all components at all mole fractions, the chemical potential for a component of that solution is equal to the chemical potential of it as a pure liquid plus RT times natural log of the mole fraction. As you have mole fraction times pure vapor pressure divided by vapor pressure gives you just mole fraction left over going from here to here. We can then use this to compute the pressure composition diagram, which tells us as a function of the mole fraction of a given substance in solution, uh, what, is the, what is the mole fraction of that substance in the gas? What is its mole fraction in the liquid? And there's also this region here uh, at various pressures wh where the gas and the liquid will coexist to some degree. We also have temperature composition diagrams where we have <clears throat> as a function of the mole fraction of a given substance in the solution, you go from uh, the boiling point of the solution being the boiling point of one component to it being the other as you go from none to all of it being the given component. And again, there's going to be a discrepancy in the mole fraction of the liquid phase and of the gas phase of what the mole fraction of component one will be uh, in the various phases due to the differences in boiling point just as there were differences in vapor pressure for pressure composition diagrams. When we mix two substances together um, if the solution is behaving ideally the Gibbs energy change during that process will be negative temperature times the entropy of mixing ideally during that process which is equal to gas constant times temperature times sum over all the components of the solution of their number of moles times natural log of their mole fraction. And for ideal solutions, 
the enthalpy of mixing and the volume change of mixing is equal to zero. Okay. Henry's law tells us <clears throat> in the alternate case, uh, rather than Raoul's law, what the vapor pressure of a component is equal to. And it says that Henry's law says that the vapor pressure of a component of a solution is equal to a constant called the Henry's law constant times its mole fraction as the mole fraction of that substance goes to zero, and also as its vapor pressure goes to zero. So the Henry's law constant just comes from, you can empirically determine it by measuring the partial derivative in the vapor pressure of the substance with respect to the mole fraction of that substance evaluated as the mole fraction of that substance goes to zero. Okay, so sometimes solutions do not behave ideally. So instead of the, when we have this nice expression here for when a solution behaves ideally for calculating its chemical potential, we want an analogous quantity to mole fraction in this equation for something that behaves non-ideally. So what we have is activity. So activity is defined for a substance in solution as its vapor pressure divided by the vapor pressure of it as a, as a pure liquid. So for ideal solutions, the mole fraction and activity are the same thing. But often the uh, activity or the vapor pressure will deviate from the ideal value, and that's where activity is used. So for all substances, regardless of whether they behave ideally for an, or not, the chemical potential in solution is equal to the chemical potential as a pure liquid plus RT times natural log of their activity. We can also then define the activity coefficient, gamma, as the activity divided by the mole fraction of a given substance. And for an ideal solution, the, activi the activity coefficients for all components is going to equal 1, as these two values are equal to each other. We can then define two different standard states for activity, one based on Raoul's law and one based off of Henry's law. Use Henry's law for... Uh, solutes, which is something where uh, you have one component in the solution which is much, much more dilute than the other. So something that is only sparingly present in a solution, it's appropriate to use Henry's law as the standard state definition of activity. And for a solvent, which is something which has, it, it dominates the mole fraction of the solution. So for example, most aqueous solutions, water is the solvent. We have the standard state defined by Raoul's law, which Raoul's law is true for all substances as the mole fraction approaches one. So as you approach pure water, Raoul's law is going to be true for water in an aqueous solution. Whereas as you approach, for example, um, some type of, let's say, glucose dissolved in a solution, if as the mole fraction of the glucose approaches zero, uh, Henry's law will become true. So Henry's law is an appropriate standard state for solutes, and Raoul's law is an appropriate standard state for solvents.